Okay, welcome back. Uh, we will uh, be continuing in uh, Chapter 2 this week. Uh, some of the lessons uh, might be uh, a little bit uh, repeat uh, previous lessons, but uh, it all, it's always good to maybe hear uh, some of the same things more than once. Uh, feel free to uh, stop the video from time to time to pause it to, to uh, solve a problem or uh, study uh, study my examples uh, a little bit more in detail. Well, first, uh, let's take a look at where we're going and what we hope to accomplish here. The, the lesson uh, this uh, week kind of extends uh, our uh, understanding of variables. Uh, we'll talk about the we call them primitive data types. Uh, a, a primitive data type is uh, uh, data types that are built into the language. Uh, uh, in, a, in future lessons, we'll talk about uh, reference data types. Uh, and as an example, uh, the string data type uh, is a reference data type. Uh, and uh, you can understand that maybe or recognize that because that data type is specified with a capital S as the data type, whereas the primitive ones in Java are uh, all lowercase. Okay? Uh, we'll look at how to do uh, more arithmetic. All right, pretty straightforward. Uh, and then there's times that we, we want to change uh, a data type uh, temporarily from uh, uh, one data type to another, maybe to improve uh, the, provision, the precision of a calculation. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how we can uh, do that type of conversion. Um, and then probably finish up a little bit talking about uh, system date and time. Uh, you, you had that, uh, that lesson, uh, that ex exercise of uh, using the system date. And then uh, look at a more complicated uh, calculation program, uh, uh, calculating loan payment. Java uh, supports eight primitive data types. Remember, a primitive data type is a data type that is built into the language. Uh, six of those, as you see on this chart, are uh, numeric data types. And four of the numeric type uh, simply deal with integers. And float and double uh, deal with uh, decimal type numbers. Uh, if you uh, kind of look at the right side of the chart, uh, it expresses and says how many bytes, how much storage bytes or bits, excuse me, uh, each different data type takes. And uh, if you look at the integers, the integers go from 8, 16, 32 to 64 bits. So the number, the, the more bits, the larger the number uh, range can be. So uh, an 8-bit number, a byte, right? simply can store the numbers, you know, the, the values 127 to negative 128. Uh, you might ask yourself, well, why is it negative 128 and I stop at 127 uh, because zero, right? Uh, so I can only express uh, 255 numbers with eight bits. Uh, and then we go up to very, very large numbers that take 64 bits uh, long. Okay? Uh, floating point and double, uh, again, two different uh, ranges in, in size. All right? uh, most, most applications, you, you probably will deal simply with double and an integer. Uh, unless you have some very specific scientific type applications. All right, so those are six types of the, the six data uh, numeric data types. I said there was eight primitive data types. The other two are character, which represents just a single character, an A, a Z, all right, things like that. And Boolean, a data type that can take on a value of either true or false, all right? So the rule of thumb is to you know choose the data type that best suits your application. You know, 
in theory, the best data type to choose to represent the age of a person probably uh, is a byte. We don't, uh, unless you're dealing with Methuselah, uh, we don't talk about ages uh, in the range of 127 or more. You know. uh, decimal is more precise than uh, uh, floating point. Uh, we will uh, look in a minute about the uh, uh, precision right, uh, that uh, is lost right, with uh, both floating point and double. Uh, and that's simply because uh, uh, in binary we can't represent these numbers uh, really exact to the nth decimal. Okay. Uh, when uh, representing a double or float as literals, all right, we'll review literals again, uh, we can specifically denote that the literal is a double or a float uh, by uh, putting an F for, for a float or a D for a double uh, on the end. Okay? We can also represent these numbers uh, in a floating po uh, in scientific notation. So, uh, I, you know, uh, and that only pertains to uh, double and float. But again, uh, in most applications that uh, we deal with, uh, dollars and cents, uh, things like that, we're not going to need to uh, get into that scientific notation. Well, one of the things that should be pointed out, too, is that, again, looking at the storage size, you can always go uh, you know, from a smaller storage size, or narrow, for example, 8 bits, to a wider storage size, say 16 bits. So it's perfectly legal to move something that was represented as a byte to, to, to uh, uh, move that or, or store that in something that is uh, defined as a short. So you can always go from a narrow size, 8 bits to 16 bits, or 8 bits to 32 bits, or 32 bits to 64 bits. But you can't go the other way. I will lose. I can't take a short and store it in a byte. I'll, I, it won't work. In, in fact, the, the uh, compiler will complain if you try to do that. So you can always go from a narrow, fewer bits, to a wider, more bits uh, storage. Simply need to point out that uh, Java doesn't allow you to do a chained uh, assignment like, like uh, I have shown here. It's just for demonstration purposes. I want to demonstrate the ability to go from narrow to wide as compared from going from wide to narrow. If you look at uh, this slide, it tells you it tells just tells us what the legal some illegal assignments are. All right. If you remember, byte, short, integer, long went from 8 bit to 16 bit to 32 bit. So the first set of assignments there saying you can assign an integer to a long. You can assign a short to an integer. You could assign a short to a long, uh, and so forth. But you can't assign a, a short to a byte. Uh, it's uh, going from a uh, wider uh, a byte is short is 16 bits and a byte is 8 bits. So you can't move, you can't assign 16 bits to 8 bits. Well, let's uh, take a look at uh, how we do arithmetic. Uh, we see that we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and remainder. Uh, no exponentiation. Uh, so what kind of language is this? We uh, we, how, do, how do we raise something to a power? Um, you know, repeated multiplication probably isn't going to uh, answer that question. Uh, I think we'll take a look at that at 
the end of uh, this lecture when we try to uh, calculate a loan payment. Uh, you know, most of these are pretty straightforward operators. Uh, make sure you use the forward slash for division. It's not going to rec uh, recognize the backward slash. Uh, yeah, the percent remainder uh, uh, operator is sometimes uh, sometimes useful. Uh, we have, uh, for example, what it's a percent uh, produces an integer uh, uh, result. Uh, so it, it deals with working with two integers. Uh, we we can't be uh, having doubles or floats participate as operands in the uh, uh, calculation. And uh, so it simply says, hey, if I uh, divide 20 by 3, what's my remainder? OK, so it, yeah, it, sometimes it's useful. Uh, you uh, might want to think about, uh, Suppose you want to represent uh, 6 divided by 4 as 1 and 1 half, right? not 1.5. Uh, if I did simple uh, integer uh, division, uh, it would uh, uh, result in 1 uh, as uh, as an answer, all right? Uh, so why don't you think about that? And as a challenge, uh, write a little program, OK? And uh, submit it to me as extra credit uh, how you would uh, represent or how, how you could program 6 divided by 4 as 1 and 1 half. Uh, for readability purposes, you see they leave spaces around the operators. Right? It makes it easier to read. Okay, uh, we have to understand the role that data types play in the uh, operations. Um, a, uh, a wide, uh, the wider the data type of an operand, that determines the. Uh, results data type. So if you have an integer uh, divided by a long, the results gonna, should be a long. Right? If you have uh, uh, an integer times a double, the ro result will be a double. Uh, or if it's a float divided by a double, all right, uh, we might uh, will end up with a double, because a double is a wider uh, data type than a float. So uh, kind of remember that the uh, data types, uh, uh, the, which data type determines the output result. OK, just demonstrating some of uh, division and uh, results uh, in mixed type. Uh, remember, an integer divided by an integer uh, it's going to yield an integer, so uh, 5 divided by 2 is going to yield 1. If I have a double, 5.0, then that will yield a decimal value or, or a double value, uh, because that's a wider data type than an integer, that will yield a 2.5. And if we use the remainder, uh, I'll get a result of an integer. So anytime you have mixed mode, all right, the result will always be the writer mode. This example is uh, just uh, trying to convince us that there is a usefulness for the uh, remainder operator. Uh, what, well, what day will it be 30 days from now or 10 days from now? All right? Well, uh, if we uh, consider that uh, computers usually start counting at zero, and Sunday is the uh, first uh, day of the week, then Sunday has a value of zero. And Monday has a value of one, Tuesday a two, and uh, Saturday a six. So we have assigned seven different values. But uh, 
generally computers start counting things at zero. So uh, in the example here, we're adding uh, 10 days to today. This is being recorded on a Saturday, which is a 6. That will give me 16. And if I use remainder seven days a week, uh, and I use the remainder operator, it says, hey, I have a remainder of two. And that should be Tuesday. Why? Zero is Sunday. One is Monday. Two is Tuesday. So, a, you know, kind of a useful little uh, 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 operator there in, in this. Well, not to... Uh, beat a dead horse, but uh, here's a, here uh, we have a problem. Uh, our problem is uh, we want to convert a number of seconds to uh, how many hours, minutes, and seconds that uh, that particular number of seconds uh, represents. So if I have 1,500 seconds, that represents 25 minutes. If I have 17,890 seconds, that represents 4 hours, 58 minutes, and 10 seconds. So what do I have to do? All right. As uh, with any good programming problem, I have to uh, write an algorithm. And uh, first of all, I need to ask my user uh, to enter a number of seconds. And uh, the easy part is converting those seconds. How many minutes do I have? Convert, divide by 60. And how many hours do I have? Divide by 60 again, the minutes by 60. And then I have to compute uh, uh, the minutes remaining using a remainder operator and display the results. All right. So take uh, take a minute, pause, pause the pause the uh, uh, slide. All right, and uh, verify that my example data all right, is correct. The next slide, uh, we'll take a look at a Java program to do that. OK, here's, uh, here's the Java uh, program that uh, will convert those uh, seconds to hours, minutes, and seconds. Uh, we have a scanner, of course. Uh, I have my variables uh, defined. Uh, ask the user to uh, input uh, a number of seconds, right? So it uh, should be pretty straightforward. Uh, the first conversion I do is how many how many minutes does the seconds represent? So I divide by 60, and then it'll give me an absolute number of minutes. Uh, then I ask uh, from of those minutes uh, how many hours are in those minutes. And again, if I divide by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, that'll tell me how many hours I have. Okay. Now, uh, uh, if I have, for example, uh, 63 minutes, right? Uh, I ha when I convert to hours, I have some minutes left over. So. Uh, when I divide those minutes, I uh, use the remainder operator for those minutes, right? Uh, minutes, remainder 60, I get the number of remaining minutes. And uh, so uh, that was in my example of uh, 63 uh, minutes, I had to get a remainder of 3. Okay? Now I need to uh, convert uh, those remaining minutes to uh, seconds, right? So I started out with seconds way up there in the uh, scanner when I had I have a, a whole I have you know a number of seconds. So what I have to do is I have to subtract out of that number that the uh, user entered uh, the number of hours, and there's 3,600 minutes or seconds in an hour and I have to subtract out those few remaining minutes right uh, 60 seconds in a minute and that will tell me the seconds so I've, I've now have 
with my first division, I have the number of minutes, since it's integer. With my second division, I have the number of hours. Uh, and uh, with the remainder, I know the remaining number of minutes. So I now can uh, display the uh, number of hours, minutes, and seconds uh, in the number of seconds that were entered by the user. Uh, again, I encourage you to uh, uh, pause the video, uh, take some time, uh, maybe type this little program into uh, uh, a text pad, uh, check some of those numbers that I gave you in the slide, previous slide, and uh, uh, see if you uh, come up with the same result. We noted, uh, I noted earlier that the uh, arithmetic with uh, uh, double and arithmetic with uh, uh, float uh, don't, uh, don't come out quite accurate. Uh, and, it, and it's simply because of the way uh, floating point or double uh, numbers are represented in memory by binary. Uh, if we look at the calculation of uh, a double 1.0, uh, and then I'm subtracting uh, multiple times a, a point 0.1, I, I come out with uh, just a very small uh, precision error. I don't come out exactly a half, as I should. Or if I subtract uh, 0.9 from 1, I should, I should come, with, come out with uh, 1 tenth. But uh, notice, again, there's a slight precision error. All right? Uh, and uh, you, you know, whether you're using double or, uh, or a float, uh, you, you will have uh, similar types of uh, uh, precision errors. In the first example, uh, if I use a float, uh, my result will be 0.49999. Uh, so uh, integers are st stored precisely. And so their, car their, car their uh, calculations yield very uh, precise results. Uh, and for the most part, uh, if we uh, do some rounding, if we learn how to do some rounding uh, uh, and, and uh, so forth, uh, we can get our uh, results uh, as precise as we need it for most of our calculations. We, uh, we touched on uh, numeric literals in the uh, uh, last session. All right. And we can look at uh, some examples here of uh, uh, integers and doubles and floats, all right, uh, as as to uh, how those how those literals are represented. Uh, we're representing these uh, literals as part of the assignment operators when we initialize, all right. Uh, so the first three uh, uh, don't need a lot of explanation. Uh, the double value. Uh, the third one there, note that when I initialize that uh, value, I, initial, I make sure my literal is a double by doing, using 5.0. That's assumed to be a double. All right. uh, if I use simply 5, if I simply use the integer 5, uh, it would be, we, we, we call the process uh, coercion, it would coerce the 5 to be a double and set the double value properly. Okay. Uh, here, if I want to set some, uh, uh, say, a value of a float to to a number, right? Uh, say I want to set it to seventy-eight thousand six hundred fifty-four and ninety-eight hundredths, right? Without any uh, special care on my part, uh, it would not let me set the float uh, to that value without an F on it. Because without an F, that value, the 78,654.98, would be, be treated as a double. And if you remember, a double is wider than a float. So it would, it would create an error. Uh, in order for that literal to be 
uh, considered a float, I need to use the F. All right? And it could be a capital F or a lowercase f. All right? uh, or I could use the scientific notation, and that should work as well. Uh, again, down in the uh, uh, the uh, calculation uh, that we're doing it for the area of a circle. Okay, uh, the uh, first formula for uh, computing that area of the circle uh, will throw an error during your compile time. Uh, it's because uh, you're trying to uh, multiply uh, a float radius uh, by a double pi and set the value uh, uh, result into uh, a float area. Uh, pi, as a literal there in the first formula, is treated as a double. And a double would be the result of the radius times radius times pi and consequently you can't set a double uh, e or a float area equal to a double. You can't go from wide or double to narrow or float. So to correct the problem, uh, we uh, specify that pi is a float by adding the f suffix on the end. And now I have a legal uh, equation that will uh, equate to a float value should point out that uh, only floats can be represented as scientific notation. So in my example uh, of the scientific notation up there, no further uh, documentation is needed in order to represent that number as a float. using literals uh, to assign values to integers uh, can work uh, just as well as long as we're not trying to set a, uh, uh, a integer to a value that uh, is, would not fit. So for example, uh, if b is a byte and I'm trying to assign it uh, the value of 1,000, that would cause a compile error. The range for a value of values for a byte is 128 negative to 127 positive. If I uh, would try to set a long, all right, uh, to that uh, literal value 9989999. Nine, again, this would cause a compiler error. Why? Well, because the literal, as it is specified, would be considered an integer. And as an integer, that value is much too large uh, to be an integer. It's not that the assignment won't work. It's that the literal is illegal. To uh, correct the problem, I would have to specify that the literal is a long. Now, how would you might do that? I need to add the L suffix to the end. Now, during your time as a programmer, you may uh, be faced with a uh, very complex, or what looks like a complex uh, uh, equation that uh, you have to convert into a programming statement, uh, the thing to remember is that uh, Java, as uh, most programming languages, adheres to the uh, order of operations that you learned uh, in uh, algebra class and, uh, and would simply need to take it a little bit uh, time at a time. So you see how we translated the uh, equation to uh, a Java statement, well, although we didn't do any assignment, so as a, as a statement that uh, is illegal, but at least it's a, it's a valid expression in Java. 
Remember that the order of operations is that parentheses are always evaluated first. Multiplication and division are the next level, and they are the same level. So multiplication and division would be evaluated left to right if they appeared uh, without a parentheses. Uh, and then addition, subtraction. And again, they're the same level, so if they appear in uh, without a parentheses changing the order of operations, uh, it would just simply uh, evaluate the addition, subtraction uh, left to right. So we can do some pretty complicated things. Uh, and this is not unusual uh, in any programming language. It's not uh, unusual for Java. Just to uh, take a look at uh, how we might, uh, uh, at this point, access the uh, system clock to understand what time it is, uh, there is a uh, system function. Remember, the system class is automatically included, called cur mil seconds, uh, current mil seconds, excuse me. And I can retrieve the uh, number of seconds that has elapsed since January 1st, 1970. Uh, why uh, 1970? And well, it has something to do with that's the year that the Unix operating system was introduced. But uh, it returns uh, those number of seconds in uh, terms of Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, that's the time in uh, Greenwich, England. And uh, so any time that would be re returned uh, would be the time in Greenwich, England. And uh, you are left to, to an assignment on Blackboard to uh, convert that time to uh, Central Standard Time. Uh, now, if it's... Uh, if it's 1,500 hours and 37 minutes in Greenwich, England, it's going to be X number of hours and 37 minutes Central Standard Time. Uh, the conversion is left to you and to your uh, research on that conversion. Uh, remember that the time is in milliseconds. That's thousandths of a second. The program uh, that you have for your assignment it gives you a pretty good uh, uh, look at uh, using the arithmetic operators for uh, uh, changing uh, those milliseconds into hours, minutes, and seconds. Well, sometimes we are uh, in a situation where we need to use a variable uh, both as a result and as an operand. For example, if we want to add a value to a total. Uh, we would uh, write some type of instructions such as total equal total plus the value. Uh, if we look at our slide here, the, uh, we have i uh, and to add uh, 8, the value 8 to i, I could either do it as written on the right-hand side, the equivalent column, i equals i plus 8, uh, in which case the value of i is not changed until uh, the expression on the right-hand side of the uh, equal sign has been completed. Uh, I can use shorthand uh, notation, uh, i plus equal eight, and that's equivalent. And so I have these uh, shorthand operators, plus equal, minus equal, times equal, divide equal, uh, and uh, remainder equal that I can use. If the operators are confusing to you, don't use them. There's no, no reason to use, use something that uh, confuses you or makes your program, uh, you know, look a little bit more complicated. All, the, all of the statements under the equivalent column are very straightforward. Uh, anybody uh, 
should be able to understand those. If it hurts your brain to think about the statements under the example column, my suggestion is keep it simple. Keep the, do the KISS principle. All right? But it's uh, the shortcut are, are um, assignment operators, you know, combine the opera operator and the assignment uh, in one uh, statement. And, uh, you know, it's typically, uh, you, it's always used when the result variable is going to be part of the computation. Java has some uh, special operators. Uh, many languages have operators similar to this. And they are called the increment and decrement op operators. And they are used when you want to simply increment a value by 1, or you want to subtract a value by 1. Uh, however, the uh, real important is to understand how uh, the value or when the value is incremented or decremented. And so it makes a difference if you put the uh, double plus sign in front of the variable or if you put it behind the variable. So they're called a, a post increment and a pre increment, right? Pre coming before, all right? and post coming after. So with the pre-increment, the value is incremented by 1, and then it can be used with that new value in an expression. With a post-increment, the, the original value of the variable is used in an expression somehow, and then the variable is uh, incremented. And the same with uh, uh, decremented, subtracting. All right. So let's look at another slide that shows uh, some uh, uh, examples. Of so let's note in this first example that uh, we are looking at uh, two variables, new num and i. And the value of i is uh, 10 to, to start with. And my expression is that my new num is going to equal 10 times i with the post increment. So the question is, what is the value of new num when this statement is finished? And what is the value of i when the statement is finished? If you said new num was 100 and i was 11, you'd be correct, right? Since the i has the post increment notation, that means it's not changed. This value is not changed until that statement is all uh, completed. And so in the right-hand pane, you'll see how that uh, looks, uh, you know, if we didn't use the post increment statement. The next uh, example uh, shows uh, uh, what happens or asks what happens when we use the pre increment. Are you are you able to uh, tell me the value of new num and i when the statement uh, new num equal ten times plus plus i, which is the pre-increment, has been completed. If you said the value of new num was 110, uh, you'd be correct. i is still 11. All right, so regardless of when, uh, when the, statement is, the statements are finished, i always ends up being 11. It's what is its value when it's being used. And since uh, we have the pre-increment in the statement, that means before I do my multiplication, it's going to increment i from 10 to 11, and then 10 times 11 is 110.
So the important thing to remember with pre-increment, post-increment, or decrement is when those values are going to be changed. They always change the value by, a, by one, either add one to the variable or Without any inter interference from us uh, to changing uh, statements around, uh, we uh, Java will uh, will uh, do some uh, numeric conversion uh, automatically based on the different types of numerics that are participating in the expression. Uh, so. Uh, Generally speaking, the longest or widest uh, variable in an expression will determine the outcome, will determine what the result would be. So uh, we see that uh, if we have the uh, second example there, where i is a byte and 3 and 4 are integers, the outcome will be a, at least an integer, but uh, and we can set that we we can make k uh, a long. That's not a problem because a, an integer is narrower than a k well, long, so we can set a wider to uh, a narrower. In the uh, final example there. Uh, Without the abs with the absence of parentheses, the evaluation would be, all right, we do left to right multiplication and division. And so we do the multiplication first. And since 3.1 is a double, the result of that would be a double. Since k is a long and divided by 2, an integer, the result there would be a long. And while when I add the two together, a double plus a long, I will end up. I will end up with a double. So my result would be a double. So it's important that the result be set uh, correctly. So if one of the operations is a double, the other will be converted. Uh, the, re the result will be converted to a double. Uh, if one of the operands is a float, then the other operand will be converted to a float, and the result will be a float. Uh, and so it depends on the widest. Uh, data type that's being used. And uh, doubles and floats will take precedence over over integers. So uh, if I had a float with a, with a long, uh, even though a long is uh, equivalently uh, the same size, both of them are 32 bits, the, uh, I will have, uh, my result will be a float. All right? So, uh, Got to kind of keep that in mind. The uh, uh, next slides, uh, the next uh, le part of this lesson, will talk about how we can force variables to to be to act as if they are a different type. So you are asked to uh, write a legitimate uh, legal Java expression, Java statement not a whole program, just a statement that's uh, going to uh, implement the formula for converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. And so it needs to be just a very simple uh, one-line Java statement. And uh, let's uh, stop the uh, video at this point and uh, try your hand at doing that uh, conversion. If uh, your uh, conversion statement uh, looked like this, uh, you're wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, in fact, your uh, result would be zero for any uh, Fahrenheit temperature. Uh, can you uh, figure out why? Maybe pause and think about this uh, for just a uh, few minutes and just pause the the uh, audio the the, the video.
Did you figure out the problem? Well, the problem lies in 5 divided by 9. Both of those are integers. And when I do an integer division, I have no fractional part or no decimal parts, so 5 divided by 9 will be 0 and everything else will be uh, multiplied by 0. So my uh, result is wrong. We will see uh, after a couple of uh, uh, new slides here, we'll see what we can do about this. Well, I don't want to get into the theater business or the movie business, but uh, just as in, uh, in the theater we have actors who uh, take on roles as part of the cast, and so they, they act uh, differently. They, are, they, they take on a different persona uh, during the time that they were in a play or a movie. Well, we can do the same type of thing with uh, Java. We can have a uh, value or, or a variable uh, act as if it's a uh, different type of variable for the duration of an expression or so forth. There's, uh, we call this casting, much the same as in the movies or the theater, we have a cast. So we have some implicit casting, for example, when uh, uh, I have the double D and I say set that equal to 3. Well, we know that 3 is an integer. But implicitly, uh, or automatically, uh, it, Java is going to cast 3 as a double so it can set D to the correct value. So it's going to be widening it. Okay, so many times uh, implicit or widening a variable is in implicit. All right, so you look at the little box at the bottom. We have byte short, integer long, float. As I move from left to right, uh, I will continue to be widening uh, my uh, data types. And so if I set an int equal to a float, it will, the Java will coerce uh, the integer to be temporarily afloat so I can set a, perfect, a proper value. But other times we want to do explicit type casting. And with explicit type casting, we prefix the uh, value, the, either the uh, literal or the uh, variable, with a uh, prefix of the type that we want that value to be treated as temporarily. So you can see that in my first uh, expression there, I am uh, temporarily making 3.0 an integer. And so I can set i to the value of 3.0 and that will uh, not cause a compile error. If I, did, if I uh, didn't have that typecast in front, that uh, paren int paren, uh, trying to set i equal to 3.0 would be an error. I can't set an integer to a double. Uh, the second line there uh, is going to do, do, do the same thing. It's going to temporarily make uh, 3.9 an integer. And in the process of doing that, it will simply truncate the 9. Throw it away. Ignore it. And I'll set i equal to 3. So what's wrong with uh, my statement in x? Well, if you said that the result of 5 divided by 2 uh, is a double, you are correct because uh, we get uh, a widening uh, to a double because 2.0 uh, is treated as a double. I can correct that by uh, prefixing the 5 with paren double paren. It equals 5 divided by 2. Pause the video for, for a minute. And, uh, 
Well, I don't mean to bore you with trivial problems, but uh, let's take a look at uh, this little problem. Uh, I have double result equals uh, int number 1 divided by int number 2. And the value of int number 1 is 89. And the value of int number 2 is 7. So what's the value of double result? Pause the tape and, you know, and the video and let's uh, work it out a minute. Well, if you said the uh, result is uh, 12, you were correct. Um, now the question is, why would the result be 12? If you said that the uh, result is uh, simply 12 because both are uh, integers, you're absolutely correct. I'd lose that uh, precision. Uh, my, my answer was coerced to a double. That's why it's 12.0. So let's take a look and see how this uh, might be resolved. Well, I've rewritten the uh, division statement here. And uh, pause for a minute. Work, uh, pause the video. Uh, now what is w, double result? So I did uh, get a different uh, result. I got 12.714, da 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 da. Why? What's the difference? What caused me to uh, get a double result now? I don't have an inner. Well, the big change was that I temporarily made int number two a double. I cast it as a double. So remember, if one of the operands is wider than another operand, the result is the widest operand. So that parent double parent bef uh, before int number two made uh, int number two temporarily treated as a double. It cast it as a double. That's typecasting. Uh, could I have uh, put double? Uh, in front of int number one, yes. Could I made them? Could I typecast them both? Yes. They both. It all uh, result in the same thing. But I only have to. I only have to typecast one. So uh, we're going to look at that uh, Fahrenheit problem you did a minute ago and uh, see how we could uh, correct the conversion from Fahrenheit. So did you figure out how our problem and how to uh, avoid uh, converting all Fahrenheit temperatures uh, to zero Celsius? Uh, the problem is, uh, uh, in the answer for the problem is uh, in typecasting. And if we make one of the operands of uh, 5 divided by 9 a double, uh, then we will get the correct result. So typecasting plays a very important role in getting the right, the correct results. You need to uh, understand what the results uh, should be. Uh, and uh, that's part of your testing process. So to get the correct results, uh, work the problem out manually first, and then uh, test your results of your So let's look at uh, maintaining or uh, creating a result uh, to the number of decimal places that uh, I might require. So book, uh, we'll use this simple uh, example of create, uh, calculating a tax, a sales tax amount. And if uh, so purchase times uh, a tax rate is going to give me my tax. And now I want to convert that tax to two decimal places. So the uh, result of step one is 4.67853. So the process in, in looking at and evaluating that tax equal int tax times 100 divided by 100, uh, we need to kind of take that apart. So tax times 100 uh, moves the decimal place two places to the right. 
giving me 467.853. Then I cast that as an int. So that truncates the 0.853, leaving 467. Well, I don't want $467 as my tax. Now I divide it, divide that result, divide the 467, 467 by 100, and my result is $4.67. Uh, if I wanted three decimal places, I could multiply by 1,000 and then divide, create that an integer, and then divide by 1,000. If I wanted one decimal place, multiply the, re the result by 10, create an integer, and then divide by 10, and uh, I'd end up with one decimal place. OK, we're almost uh, done for uh, this lecture, but I uh, want to wrap up with uh, uh, how, I, how we might compute the uh, payment uh, for a loan, a loan whether you're uh, buying a car or a house, uh, the uh, formula is all the same. You can see the the formula looks uh, very complicated, but uh, let's take it apart. So the first part is uh, we'll call it the numerator, and that's simply the loan amount times the monthly interest rate. And then the denominator is uh, one minus, and it's that whole ugly fraction there, so I'll put that in parenthesis, uh, 1 over, and then uh, 1 plus the monthly interest rate, and oh, how am I going to ever do that? I have to take the number of years times 12, so that's uh, as an exponent. And then I have to divide the numerator by the denominator. Boy, that looks ugly. So. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the next uh, slide, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at a program that uh, does this. And, and the real problem is, well, how do I do exponentiation? How do I do exponents? Well, here's the first part of the program to compute a loan payment. Right? I want you to, to pay particular attention to uh, the prompts uh, on this uh, slide, uh, because the prompts are telling the user uh, exactly how they want the information to uh, be entered. Uh, the first prompt, for example, says enter the year yearly interest rate as a percentage, as 8.25. Now, in order to use a percent value, I will have to convert that to a decimal by dividing by 100. And so after it's been input down on line 14, that's what I'm doing. I'm converting the, what was entered to uh, a decimal. And uh, I need to do that. And I want the monthly interest rate. So month, you know, 12 months in a year. And I have a, a also convert it to a, a percent from a percent to a decimal. So I divide by 1,200. Uh, Enter the number of years. That's not a problem. All right, we can enter the number of years. And we uh, also ask me to enter the loan amount. So this basically is just simply uh, uh, getting the input uh, from uh, the user. Notice my scanner in line 11. I'm, I'm expecting the user to enter a double. In line 19, I'm expecting the user to enter an integer. And then in line 23, I am uh, looking for a double again. The only point that out is to say, you know, I don't need a new scanner to be able to read from the keyboard data of different types. I tried to uh, simplify. Uh, the calculation from the listing uh, in the uh, text. Uh, sometimes it's uh, simpler to see how the pieces uh, come together. The uh, uh, first is the calculation of the numerator, which is uh, pretty straightforward, I think. And then the denominator. Well, now remember in the denominator down here, we needed to uh, 
raise uh, 1 plus the monthly interest rate to the value of an exponent, the number of years times 12 months. Uh, and the way uh, we do that is we use the math class. The math class, like the system class, is automatically inc included. So we don't have to do an import. And the math class has a POW, or a power function, so that we can and, uh, raise a number to a power. And uh, the arguments are uh, the base, the number that we want to uh, raise to a power, uh, comma, and the exponent, the uh, power to which we want to raise the value of the base. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the uh, Remember that a, a fractional exponent, such as uh, uh, 0.5 or 1 half, is the same as doing a square root. So we could do the a cube root by setting the exponent to be 1 divided by 3. Uh, so the POW function gives us that ability to do uh, exponents as well as uh, as, as well as roots. So I uh, hope that uh, uh, is clear. Well, that's it for this lecture. I hope it hasn't uh, been too, uh, too confusing. The uh, next lesson uh, will uh, complete our work in, uh, in Chapter 2.